Hey friendos, it's Mustafa, second year medical student, and today I'll be talking about and comparing the three note-taking apps that you can use on your iPad. Since school is starting up soon, a lot of people have been asking what kind of apps that they should use to take notes on their iPad. Since there's a couple out there, I'm going to compare the three best and the three most talked about. Good notes, one note, and notability. I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of each and you can decide for yourself which one is best for you. With that being said, let's roll the intro. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you go, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Thank you guys. Back to the intro. So let's go straight to the video. The first app I'm going to compare is GoodNotes. GoodNotes in itself is a very good app in my opinion. And this app has a lot of great features. So let's go and make a pros and cons list. So let's go with pros first. The very first thing that I noticed about GoodNotes is that it has a really good file organization system. So for example, we have term four, four here. So the biggest thing about this app is that you can have folders in folders within folders. So for example, term four in medical school for me, you can see that I have week one and how I would organize it normally my classes would be week one to week 15. So for example, I would have multiple folders. Let's say for example, I'll create another one here. I can do week one, week two, I would have a bunch of them and each week I would have DLAs, which is directed learning activities, small groups and lectures. So you can see like how this can be very useful. You can have terms, you can have classes, you can have multiple classes, and then you can have different folders in each of those classes. And then within those classes, you can have your organization of your lectures or essays or readings. So you can divide it in a way that you can be very well organized in this app. Another cool feature about this app is that you can, let's say for example, you're focusing on one part of school right now. So let's say for example, I'm in term four, so I'm gonna favorite that folder, and then I'm gonna go and favorite week one. So let's say for example, we're in week one right now, so I want to focus only on week one material, so I go favorite week one. And let's say for example, I want to favorite the lectures because right now I only want to cover the lectures. So now you can go to the bottom right corner and you can click favorites and you will see those folders in your favorites. There's also the notebook feature, which is very cool because you can have different covers for it. And then there's a wide variety of pages that you can have. You can have different styled lined pages. You can have styles of planners. You can have weekly planners. You can have monthly planners and you can even have music sheets within this app. So now we're going to look at notebook. So I'm going to click notebook. So what, what's the cool feature about this is that the notebook has a lot of variability in a variety of types of pages that you can add to these notebooks. So you can have blank, dotted, squared, paper, ruled, uh, ruled narrow, ruled wide, written papers, Cornell, legal, you have a whole bunch of variety. And then let's say for example, you want to use a notebook for, as a planner, there's a wide variety of planner type of notebooks. So you can have accounting, monthly planners, you can have to-do lists, you can have weekly lists. And then let's, they have feature for music, so you can do written music, so written sheet music. So when you make a notebook, you can also design the cover of your notebook, which is a really cool feature that you don't find in Notability or OneNote. When we move on to look at the features that we have with GoodNotes, you can see that with GoodNotes, you have a lot more variety in terms of different styles of pens, different styles of highlighting, where you can have it draw straight or you can have it not draw straight. You can have different styles of erasing where you can do entire strokes or no strokes, which is found in all three apps. But you can also do a thing where you can do auto deselect, where you don't have to do the extra step between switching between the eraser and the pen. It would automatically do that once you erase, it would switch the pen automatically where you can start writing right away. When it comes to handwriting, you can also handwrite your notes and then highlight it with the lasso tool and then convert it into a text, which is an important feature that you can only really find with GoodNotes in the iPads unless you're gonna pay the extra money at Notability. With Notability, that's a hidden cost that I will talk about in a little bit. 
The fourth pro of the GoodNotes app is the thumbnail and bookmarking feature within the notebooks and lecture slides that you have. When you look at the thumbnail, you can see a preview of each slide that you have within that notebook or that specific lecture slide. And then what you can also do is bookmark a specific page. And then later on, when you go and click on favorites, you can actually find that specific page and then use that to maybe bookmark something you don't know or something you need to study again or something that's important that needs your attention. Notability also has this feature, but is not as well organized as GoodNotes. The final feature that I will mention about GoodNotes is that you are able to do side-by-side -side notes. So you can open up two windows at the same time and have, let's say for example, a lecture on the left side and a notebook on the right side. And you can actually annotate and write on both those specifically. And that's a good feature when it comes down to writing your notes while going through a lecture, let's say for example, during class or when you're at home. So now let's go to the cons. Good Notes doesn't have an audio recording feature, whereas OneNote and Notability does. The app itself, when you look at the pen features, it may have a wide variety of features, but in terms of presets for colors and pen thickness, you only have a limited amount of three, which is still better than Notability, but when it comes to OneNote, OneNote you have more space to make more presets, so that way you don't have to switch between colors and look for colors specifically. The final con, and probably the one of the main ones, is that this app is not free. GoodNotes has a cost of $10.99 on the App Store US dollars. Let's move on to the next note-taking app, Notability. Notability specifically is a more simpler app with less features and whatever that is extra has a hidden cost to it. So now let's go on to the pros of Notability. The first pro, and can also be a con depending on who you are, is the fact that the app is very simplistic. The file organization is not cluttered and it's not overwhelming. And when it comes to the note-taking features, you only have a set number of buttons so that way you don't have to be clicking a bunch of buttons and you wouldn't be overwhelmed by everything. The second pro is the audio recording feature. Everyone who has Notability knows that Notability has superior audio recording over OneNote because of the way it works, which I'll explain in a second, as well as the fact that GoodNotes has no audio feature. So let's say for example, you're sitting in class and you want to record your lecture while you are taking your notes. The one cool thing about Notability is that you can actually go back to exactly where you've written those notes and it will be tracked on that audio recording. And you can see that you can even click on a specific word what, that you have written and that will take you to that specific spot in the audio recording. This is one of the features that will take Notability above any other note-taking apps. The third feature on the pros list for Notability is the thumbnailing of the notes as well as the bookmarking. GoodNotes may have the edge in terms of this because of its overall file organization, but the simplicity of Notability makes it still a very good feature for thumbnailing, specific notes, as well as bookmarking. So now let's move on to the cons of Notability. The biggest thing about Notability that I noticed is when you get Notability for the first time, you're paying a base price of $10.99, the same as GoodNotes. But the difference with GoodNotes is that GoodNotes does not have hidden features. And so the hidden features that you may find with Notability is that the handwriting to text conversion has an extra cost of $3.99. Whereas in GoodNotes, that comes free when you purchase that app. Another hidden cost is the themes that you can use with Notability. Notability gives you three themes light mode, dark mode, and dark blue mode. But if you want the extra features like pink mode, blue mode, 
and the other modes that they have, it's at an extra cost of $1.39. So they have added additional microtransactions within the app that may deter you from using Notability. The third con of this app is that because of its simplicity, there are no presets in terms of pens, highlighters. So every time you need to change the color, you have to go back to the pen feature, pick a color, pick the thickness, and then go on and write, which can slow you down, even though it may slow you down a couple seconds, but when you're writing your notes, it may get annoying after a while. The fourth con of the app notability would be the simplistic file organization. For some, it may be a pro because you wouldn't want an overwhelming app, but for some, the organization is important and you are limited when it comes to the or file organization of notability. Whereas GoodNotes, you have unlimited organization. OneNote, you have limited, but more than notability specifically. The final app that we will be comparing is OneNote. OneNote in itself is a very good app and has been in the note-taking atmosphere for a while. So now let's get on to the pros. So the first pro of OneNote is the file organization. The file organization in itself is in between Notability and GoodNotes. You may be limited when you compare it to GoodNotes, but you have more features when you compare it to Notability. For me, it was just enough for me to get through school. You can see that within the app itself, you have multiple notebooks, which you can organize into courses. And then those specific notebooks can be split into sections, which could be split into chapters. For me personally, I split them into weeks. And then within those chapters or weeks, you can add in those pages, notes, slides, or lectures. The one really big difference between OneNote from good notes and notability and this could be a pro and a con is that when you open a page on one note the page is not limited to that specific a4 size it actually is an endless sheet of paper that you can go through this can be a pro in the sense that when you put a pdf on that lecture slide you can actually annotate the side of those notes the third pro of this app is that you can have multiple presets for your pens and your highlighters, and you can add and remove pens to the amount that you want. Another feature that is a pro for OneNote is that it has an audio recording feature. It may not be as advanced as Notability where you can track where you've written your notes, but you can actually record audio unlike GoodNotes. The fifth feature, and I think this is a very important one, is that you can use this on Mac and PC. So for people who are not using iPad specifically and using a Surface Pro, for example, would be using OneNote. And the final pro that I would say about this app is that it is free with Microsoft Office. Now let's move on to the cons of OneNote. When it comes down to OneNote, you can see that the first con is something I've already mentioned, that you have an endless page. It could be confusing when you're writing your notes, and when it comes down to sending notes to other people, you're gonna have this massive weird PDF, and it's hard to share these notes with other people, whereas with GoodNotes and with Notability, you can easily convert it to a PDF and send it off to your friends to share those notes. The second con about this app is that it does not necessarily not have handwriting to text conversion. You can actually do it, but you can only do it on the laptop. You are not able to do it on the iPad specifically. So let's say for example, you have your notes and you have your notes on your laptop and your iPad and you want to convert your handwritten notes into text. The only way to do that is that you have to open up that specific notebook in your laptop and then convert it into text. Just to bring my thoughts all together to summarize this video, I would rank GoodNotes as first, OneNote as second, and Notability as third. And the reason for Notability being last is because of its simplistic organization and limited features and whatever additional features it has, it has additional costs for them. GoodNotes in itself has superior file organization, bookmarking, 
thumbnailing, and has more variety when it comes to pages and notebooks. OneNote comes second because the way I take my notes is I like to annotate my lecture slides on the side and not within them. It has relatively good file organization and generally has all the features that you would see within GoodNotes or Notability. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video was helpful and helped you decide which app you may want to use for note taking on your iPad or Service Pro. I mean, you're limited to one note for Service Pro, but I hope this was helpful. And if it was, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. That YouTube algorithm will get this video out to more people and it will help more people who need this video to show them what 